Hey guys, Kristen here. Thanks for joining me back on my channel. I roll out a new video every Sunday. Today I am super excited to introduce another topic in the coding bootcamp series that I'm doing and it's about freelance. So some of you had this question and I'm answering it for you guys. So how to get started freelancing after coding bootcamp. This is telling everyone what you're doing. And if you haven't looked at my job hunting video yet, you should go back and watch my three secrets to getting a job after coding bootcamp. And I do a strong emphasis on networking. And so that's what you need to do. Even if you're not in coding bootcamp yet, you're in the middle of coding bootcamp, especially if you're done with coding bootcamp, network and go to meetups and even just family events. Like talk about you being a freelancer and what you like to build, what you enjoy doing. And I guarantee you there's someone who knows of someone who has an awful website and needs to be redesigned or someone who doesn't even have a website and provides a product or service so it makes no sense for them not to have a website. And they will remember you and they will send you referrals. And I, fortunately, I get a bulk of my clients through referrals. My father is a business consultant and so even with people he's not working with consistently he will recommend my services to them if they don't have a website so to be honest that's how I get a lot of my business as a freelancer and even if you don't have a family member or friend who does that kind of consulting like just tell people what you do people remember especially if you mention coding bootcamp like that's just that just seems I don't know unbelievable to some people that there's a coding boot camp like some people just don't understand what it is and we know because we have you know we've done the research we're in that type of community so just talk about what you do and what you aspire to do and people will remember that and they will reach out to you because everyone does business with someone they trust and if they already know you then that's the biggest step that's the biggest milestone you have to get your first client the next thing you need to consider is creating a process. Now, to keep it sweet and simple, I will briefly talk about the web development process and your interaction with your client process that you need to start thinking about and start writing out. So, the web development process will be how you're going to build a website. Are you going to do it by scratch? Are you going to use Ruby on Rails? Are you going to use templates with markup language and JavaScript? Or are you going to use a different platform like uh, WordPress, Squarespace, Drupal, whatever you're familiar with, and then customizing it with markup language. So that's really up to you. There's no wrong way to do it. I don't recommend by scratch. I've made that mistake before. <laughs> and so just stay simple and do what you're comfortable with. And honestly, you're learning along the way because I am still changing up how I do my web development. It's just you learn with each client and that just helps you become more efficient. Now the second part is the client interaction. Now the first thing which you should never forget to do is to create a contract. I've heard nightmare stories of freelancers who don't have a contract. It doesn't matter what industry. Like You need a contract when you have a client. Otherwise there could be a number of things that go wrong most importantly, you not getting paid. That blues. So, okay, contract. Make sure you get that done. And then you need to uh, decide how you want to do your consultations. Decide uh, how you're going to talk to them, and, like what questions you want to ask them the first time you sit down with them. And finding out their needs and goals. Like Make sure you have like a clear... Um, outline of the information that you want to get from your client to help you uh, you know help you build the best website for them and then you want to figure out how you want to do payment schedules think about how you want to get paid how often I often do installments and people seem to like it that way and uh, decide if you want to be hourly or if you want to be paid by project remember there's no <laughs> there's no wrong way to do this I choose uh, by project, I did research about hourly versus project, you know, one, a one and done payment. So just it's just your preference. Do the research, uh, but make sure you have those things in line, like 
those should be the fundamental things you do, like the foundation of your business right there. And lastly, be confident in yourself and do not undercharge your services. I know it's hard sometimes, especially if you're coming straight out of coding bootcamp or you're still in coding bootcamp and you're just preparing to become a freelancer. The coding bootcamp can really beat you down. I get it, but you are developing skills even though you're having a hard time with how intense the program is. Like, you are very valuable and trust that. Never undercharge, especially because you're just going to open the gateway of getting tons and tons of clients. Wait a minute. Clients who are absolutely cheapos, okay? And they just want to get as much out of you as possible. You don't want that. You want a client who will respect you and who will pay you enough to live comfortably, you know, like to pay for your bills and things. You don't want a client who keeps like pushing it to just get the most out of you because it's going to result in you being burnt out. Trust me, you're not going to be happy. It's just going to be a poor experience. On top of all of that, you're not even going to get paid as much as you should be getting paid. So definitely charge. <laughs> so definitely charge what you're worth. Charge competitively. See what all the other web developers are charging for their freelancing services. Now I can continue to go into this, but I'm going to keep it short and concise. So I hope that's helpful. I am really excited that some of you are thinking about being freelancers. I absolutely, I absolutely love it, although it's not for everybody, but it's great if you want to build up your portfolio or, um, or just get more experience and make sure that you enjoy doing web development before applying for a full-time position at an agency. So I will definitely revisit this topic. Thank you to those who have been asking me about freelancing. Uh, again, I am taking suggestions and I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Good luck. Bye guys.